Computer vision on Azure is great, but sometimes it's not enough to work with Microsoft's pre-trained models. Sometimes you need to customize computer vision to meet your needs. In this uh, video, I'm gonna show you how to use custom vision with image classification to classify hand gestures as either rock, paper, or scissors in the classic uh, paper, stone, and scissors game. Okay, so here we are in customvision.ai. This is Microsoft's custom vision portal where you go to train a custom vision model. And you can see I've made a couple of these already, uh, but we're gonna click new project and then we need to tell it what project name we're doing and give it a, a rough description of this project. So here I'm doing a rock, paper, scissors simulation and I'm saying, hey, this is gonna classify images based on rock, paper, and scissors hand signal. Now, I do need to tell it what resource to put this on. I have a number of Azure Cognitive Services resources already created. Next, you'll need to say, if you're trying to do classification or object detection, classification is where we're trying to say, hey, what's in this image? And object detection is a little bit more nuanced where we're saying, where is it inside this image? After that, you're gonna choose whether you want it to be multi-label or multi-class. And these are kind of hard to understand names, Multi-label means that there can be multiple classifications in the same image. So something could be both paper and scissors, for example, versus multi-class means there can really only be one. It's either gonna be paper, stone, or scissors, which is really what we want here. Now, next we're gonna to have to choose a domain. Domain is really a set of types of images that we're gonna be uploading. So there's a few different general settings and then there's things like food, landmarks, retail, and things like that. There's a lot of documentation that can walk you through all the specifics for each of these things for image classification, which is what we're doing in this example, or, or object detection. Uh, there's also some information about compact types of uh, domains, and that will help you understand more of on-device and Onyx-based things, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Okay. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at the, uh, the particular domains available for us, and we're doing hand signals. So that's really much more of a general type of a, uh, a use case. So we look at the three available general ones, and we can see, you know, some of these things have better accuracy, some of them have worse accuracy, but I like general A2 because it has a, it, well, it's just really recommended for most use cases. Um, it's also deterministic, so if you retrain it multiple times, you're gonna get the same level of accuracy. So general A2 is generally the good one that you're gonna go with, but if you're doing something very specialized, you might go to food or retail or something else. Now, after this, it's gonna put you in a blank project that doesn't have any images or anything else associated with it. And the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna upload some images. So go in, I'm gonna choose my, my scissors data set that I got from Kaggle and I'm now going to choose all of my scissors images and have it uploaded. And I'm going to have to tell it what tag or classification I want these to be. These are all scissors, so I'm going to apply the scissors label. So this is a nice little tip here, is when you're, when you're choosing your images, you can say, hey, here are all my ones in this class, organize them by folders and upload it, and you know, there you go. And we can see it's uploaded, and I sped it up a little bit, but we see we have a bunch of different images of people doing hand gestures. There's a lot of different people in this data set, a lot of different ages, and you can see the variations in this. And as we get deeper into this, we see different skin tones and things like that. That, that sort of diversity in images is actually really important for training an unbiased model or a model that's as least biased as we can make it and helping it understand a wide variety of different things. So if you're just showing it your hand a number of times in the same position all the time, it's not gonna be as accurate as it is if you're gonna show it a lot of different people with a lot of different gestures and some of them uh, you know, do these things wildly different than each other. So this gives it a greater possible chance of keying in what's important to a scissors gesture versus a rock or a hand. Okay. So once we're done with this, we're going to go in and we're going to add our rocks. And now it's going to upload that. And I'll fast forward this as well, uh, giving it the tag of rock. And that'll upload all those 700 plus images. And we'll be able to see you know, how effective this is in a little bit here. So here are our rock images. And we can see we have the same level of variation. Uh, notice we have some hair on those hands. Some of them have clothing. You know, all these are good things. And so we'll go through and we'll add our paper ones as well. Notice that you know we had 750 in the first, we had 720 something and 712 in this. So this is a little bit of a class imbalance. So we wanna make sure that we have relatively close to the same number of images in each different class. In this case, that's pretty close. But here we have all of our images and you know, we can, if we want to, we can go in and we can tweak what image something is labeled as. But in this particular case, you know they came in okay, but you could go in there and choose 
uh, to have uh, an image on a different uh, tag if you if you made a mistake. Okay. Now, once all this is up and ready, you can go and take a look at the performance and the predictions, and it really hasn't made any predictions, and there's no performance for those predictions because we haven't trained it yet. So training our model is the next step, and we need to say, hey, Azure, go ahead and learn things in this image. There's quick training and advanced training, and quick training is, is usually fine, but yeah, advanced training can let you spend additional time to get additional accuracy. But we'll do quick training, and I'm just going to skip ahead till it's completed. It took about eight minutes for this to, to train. All right, so here we are at the performance results. And we can see we've got precision, recall, and average precision. And we can see at the bottom we have the performance per tag, and we can see everything here is 100% accuracy on everything. So this is actually a perfectly fit model according to these metrics. But if this was slightly imbalanced, we could tell a little bit more about what's going wrong and, you know, what mistakes it's making, you know, is it, is it, uh, let's say miscategorizing uh, paper more than it is uh, other things, for example. So these metrics can be really handy. Once you have a trained model, you can use the quick test feature to send it a new image that it's not seen before and see what kind of predictions it's going to generate. It. So here I'm going to give it a image of a scissors that it's not seen before, and it's going to take a look at it and it's going to say, Hey, here's where I think you are. And it says, Hey, it's 99% likely that this particular image is of a scissors gesture, which is pretty accurate. Now here I'll do the same thing by giving it a rock and I get the same sort of result with 99% accuracy, which is also great. Now, finally, I'll give it a paper image to test, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a different one, one with the paper uh, kind of off camera a little bit. And you can see, well, it's 98% chance that it's paper, but there's a little bit more of a chance that it's scissors here. So it's good to test your images and see what kind of metrics you get on things that you haven't actually trained before uh, and see how accurate is your model. You can actually go in and see the performance of these past predictions as well. And that's really handy for understanding your model. Now that we have confidence in our model, we can go out and publish it and that's going to let us choose what prediction resource we want and it'll create an endpoint that we can now go out and make rest calls or use the .NET SDK and then get predictions. Now, it gives us the URL uh, for the API call and it tells us a little bit more about the headers and the content type and the body to send. So whether you're getting it the actual bytes of the image or giving a URL. Okay, so let's test our model in a more ridiculous manner, in a more real world manner by having me pose here for a little selfie with a scissors indicator. Now, note that uh, this is very different than any of the images we've shown it so far. There's no green background, there's face, there's books, there's mess, there's clutter, there's all that stuff. And we're just gonna test out our model and see what it thinks of this. And it, you see that it was able to actually see this is likely scissors, but it's not certain because it's so, it's so different than all the training images we gave it. But still, it was effective and able to use this deep learning model to understand what the image was. Finally, I want to show you Postman. And Postman is a tool we use to, to make REST requests. And I have the URL from Azure Cognitive Services, and I have the body that it told me to use, pointing it exactly at my image URI. I also am including a header, letting it know my uh, key for my resource, and I get back a response that indicates the same level of prediction probability per each one. So this is a way of using the REST API, and Postman's just a tool for sending a REST request but I'm able to make that same prediction and get that same uh, results back using anything that make a REST request, which is pretty cool. So that's custom vision in a nutshell. Most of the time we're gonna be fine with computer vision, but sometimes you're gonna have these very specific cases where you want to identify one of a fixed number of things. And that's where using custom vision and image classification can really come in handy through Azure Cognitive Services and custom vision. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've ever used this and what kinds of experiments you've run with this. Have fun.